Hey everybody, Rodman here. Thanks for tuning in to Kerbal Space Program Operation Duna Stage 2. So, last I left off, we were sitting in orbit of Kerbin and uh, trying to make our way to Duna. Now, there's one thing I failed to mention. Uh, I decided to go to Duna before I checked transfer windows. And if you are a veteran player of Kerbal Space Program, you probably already know where I'm going with this. So basically, there is a time to get to Duna, a transfer window, such as it is, uh, and I am totally out of phase for said transfer window. Um, I also wanted to go over some tips. So the first tip I got was from Ilya, mentioning to turn on the show extended burn indicator. So I have this turned on here. This will show you at what percentage of a burn you should turn on your engine. So it's saying, like, let's say I wanted to burn 60%. I should start my burn in two minutes and two minutes even. And the node is in two minutes and eight seconds. So that way it calculates uh, your start burn time. It's a pretty nice tool, and I'm going to put it up to 90%. I like to feather it a little bit at the end, so I'll have it at 90%. If you're wondering where this is, it's in settings, and then you scroll all the way down to... Um, where was it again? Uh, down to the gameplay sections and then turn on extended burn indicator. There it is. So what I'm going to do here is accelerate time. So what I'm going to do is to put myself in a 600, um, kilometer parking orbit around Kerbin. 600 kilometers because that allows you to accelerate time the most. And then I'm going to accelerate time for probably about a year in change until I am in the proper transfer window to go to Duna. Um, there, this is true in real life. There is only a certain amount of times that you can easily transfer to Mars, for instance. And if you follow space stuff like, you know, JPL or whatever, uh, they'll talk about uh, transfer windows in said terms. Uh, basically, if you are at a phase, um, you will not be able to easily transfer. If you're curious about this, one of the tools I like to use is linked. I'll put it in the description, but it's ksp.olex.biz, B-I-Z, and this will show you the transfer windows and do the math for you. It's a great little tool, uh, so I highly suggest that you use it. So right now what I'm doing is putting myself into a parking orbit. A parking orbit of 600 kilometers or 600,000 meters allows me to advance time to the max, anything lower, and it will limit the amount of time advancements. And while we advance time, I'm inevitably going to collect all my goo calculations from Minmus. Um, so I guess that part is good. So the transfer angle between Kerbin and Duna is about 44.36 degrees. If we take a rough look, I don't have a protractor, but we take a rough look, Duna needs to be about here in relation to Kerbin for a transfer. That's about 45 degree angle. Right now it's way behind me. The problem is it's not going to catch up. I am going to have to rotate around the sun almost probably about almost twice until Duna is in the right position. This is going to be a lot of time warping. Uh, luckily for me, Kerbins, ker Kerbals don't age, they don't eat, they don't sleep, they don't consume resources while waiting. They are like iced tea in um, Rick and Morty. Timeless beings that can float amongst space. Uh, which I guess is good. All right, so now I am in a parking orbit of about 600 meters. It just needs to be above six because anything less and I won't be able to time warp. And now what I'm going to do is, I know this is a little nauseating, let me zoom out. I'm going to time warp until the phases between me and Duna are correct. Which means because I have, it takes less time for one year on Kerbin than it does Duna, I need to basically catch up to Duna. So as you can see, the distance between these two planets are increasing, and then as I keep orbiting around the sun, I will catch back up. Uh, in the meantime, I'm doing a whole lot of weather and goo science. 
Um, it's probably not going to build up enough science for me to actually unlock something new, but um, of course, breaking ground gives you the ability to have science over time, which is pretty cool. So we're closing in on about a 180 degree transfer window or angle, whereas we are opposite sides of the planet. Each planet has their different transfer. So Moho, for instance, is about uh, 251 degrees. Eve is about 54 degrees. Um, Drez is 82 degrees. Joule is 96 degrees. But none of those really matter. We just need to worry about the 44 degrees between Duna and Kerbin. Now, of course, if you look at the timer up here, I have added a considerable amount of time to the mission clock here. Uh, Kerbin days versus years are not the same as Earth. So as you can see, it will count up above 365 because the orbital period of Kerbin is not 365 days. Uh, but there we go. We're up to a year now. And then this is the third year of the space program. So as we are catching up to Duna here, we are not, this is about 70 degrees or so eyeballing it. Now, if you have a protractor, uh, now would be a great time to use it. Or of course you could print one out out of paper. Um, there's a lot of different ways to make it yourself a protractor, or you could eyeball it like I'm going to do. And I'm going to show you how to eyeball it. So let's stop around here to see if this is approximately good enough. We are a year and 172 days ahead. So the transfer will look something like this. And again, this is can be you you can grab this information from the transfer calculator that I have mentioned. So we are going to start our transfer burn. Let's zoom out a little bit. We're going to start a transfer burn about here and burn out towards Duna, like this. So if I zoom out, you'll see the whole Duna burn, and then you'll see some sort of rendezvous. So as you can see here, our rendezvous is not that close. The closest approach is obviously not gonna be a true intercept. Now one thing that you could do if you have a really close rendezvous is go to your maneuver calculator. Um, come on maneuver and then go to graphical maneuver editor and add orbits to it which is basically just saying i'm going to orbit kerbin one more time two more times three more times four more times so on and so forth to try to set this up correctly but basically what i can say is i need to change my angle more it's not just a few times i have to rotate around kerbin it's many so i am going to accelerate time again and let's try this again of course, if I had a protractor, this would be a lot more accurate, but I don't, but that's okay. It's not required. You can still eyeball it. So here's our transfer burn again, some days into the future from the last attempt. Also, my ascending and descending node are about identical. As you can see, we get a little bit closer here at closest approach. And if I add orbits to this, as you can see, those markers are getting closer together, uh, which means that we are approaching the correct angle to transfer in. Accelerating time just a little bit more. You don't want to miss the transfer window entirely. You don't want to accelerate time so much so that uh, you can't do your transfer. That would be very bad because then you'd have to wait an extraordinarily long time to correct it or use extra fuel to correct it. All right, so the closest approach is getting obviously pretty close. I can add some orbits to it and adjust the burn a little bit. And what we're looking for is some sort of encounter. We're getting awfully close to an encounter. So let's go add some additional orbits. Ooh, we are really close to an encounter. So the transfer angle is maybe a week in the future or so. Let's see, does this get us there? Oh goodness, not quite, but almost. 17 days in the future? All right, what about 21 days in the future? 
Oh, uh, you're just teasing me now. All right. How about a full month? That must be enough, right? Oh, are you joking me? That actually might have been too much time. No, it wasn't too much time. Okay, I'm going to accelerate time again. Normally, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm counting the days up. All right. Now I should be able to get a nice burn in here. And this is why you'd want to use a protractor. Because the trial and error that I'm exhibiting now would be very easily solved. There we go. Now we have a periaps encounter. So if I hit tab until my focus is Duna, I can see my periaps encounter. There it is. And if I go to the graphical maneuver here and lower the changes I can make. I can get this periaps encounter awfully close to being uh, proper Duna intercepts. So what I want to do here is is set this periaps to as close to Duna as possible uh, so that we can basically burn and we'll be right there. It will be perfect. So I want this periaps to be around the equator, ideally. And then let's Whoa, too much editing. There we go. There's a closer, closer, closer. Something along the lines. Nope, not quite that. Along the lines of this. I want to orbit first before landing. Uh, so I'm going to orbit at like 400 kilometers up. So there's my maneuver. And now I can just warp to next maneuver. And here's my little ship warping, and we've warped. Let's face the maneuver node, which is going to be prograde. And our burn is in 53 seconds. Now, the burn is in 53 seconds, but our actual intercept is going to be many, many days away. Uh, this is a Hamen transfer, or Homan transfer. I don't know how to pronounce it correctly. I guess I don't really need to. So there we go. I have about... The transfer here is about as much delta V as I have in this uh, this remaining rocket. All right, so let's accelerate time until my burn time. Doesn't need to be perfect because we can make micro adjustments later. And here is my burn. We are one year and 300, almost 340 days, or 240 days, rather, uh, since we rocketed off. Because I launched this not at the ideal transfer window. So anytime you're... I'm chasing milestones, so I basically have the game dictate what next planet or satellite or whatever I'm going to do. Uh, but if you're doing this for yourself... Um, if you're playing for yourself, you could just check if any of the, if like Moho or Eve or Duna, if any of them are relatively within your transfer window. Uh, keeping in mind that anything in an orbit closer to the sun will move orbit faster and catch up to you. Uh, so like Moho, you don't need to time warp very much to get Moho in the right position. And anything further from you, uh, you don't have to time warp too much. So the planets closest to Kerbin, which is Eve and Duna have the fewest transfers, transfer windows, I think. Uh, hopefully I'm not wrong about that. Okay, so if we look back at Duna here, here's our periaps. Uh, it's not exactly, of course, as close as I wanted it to be because we need to make micro adjustments. So let's go back to my ship here. And in, let's say, 11 minutes, I'm going to add a maneuver. And then I'm going to warp back to Duna here. And then I can adjust my burn to be exactly what I want it to be. There it is. A periaps of 400k. Uh, and then maybe I want to orbit the equator. So I'll get that flattened out a bit. Yeah, that looks nice and flat. 
Orbit of 200k. Uh, Alright, that looks good. And... I'm going to... Do a very, very slight burn. In... 10 minutes. And you can keep doing micro-adjustments. And the micro-adjustments you do early on have big effects later on. If I made my adjustment here, it's about 2 delta V. Barely any adjustment. If I waited until I was within Duna orbit, that would be hundreds of delta V. So it's better to, to, to change your mind early about these things. So there we go. Uh, oh. I'm going to need to burn retrograde to correct that. So right now I'm on a collision course directly with Duna. I think what I'm going to do is thrust, uh, thrust limit this down to like 5%. So I can do micro adjustments a little bit more easily. And instead of another maneuver, I'll just eyeball this. Just a tad. So. There we go. Periaps. And. Um, it's not perfectly equatorial. If I wanted to correct that. The easiest way to do that would be to do a little maneuver, just because I can't eyeball it. And then warp back to Duna. And use my maneuver nodes to get me that nice, even equatorial orbit. Something like that. It's a 0.1 meter per second difference here. I'm going to thrust limit this down to 1% thrust. Because this is barely, barely any different. And that's a really, really tight orbit. But that saves me fuel in the long run. Come on. This ship is big and heavy. You know what? I don't even... my. It's such a small change that my maneuver node isn't even really showing up. So what I'm going to do is just ignore that. I'll have whatever orbit I have here. I'm going to warp to my next maneuver... Or to the Duna intercept now, roughly. Let's get my thrust limiter back up. And let's go ahead and warp to the Duna encounter. Which is... Uh, few uh, it was like 150 day or 250 days in advance um yeah it it at the very least will take two years and 54 days according to this uh delta v map i'm looking at for a proper duna transfer it takes a long time to get to duna um it is one of the longest transfer windows uh for comparison moho is 135 days um eve is one year 380 days. Duna is 2 years 54 days. Uh, Joule is 1 year 40 days. Elo is 1 year and 245 days. Um, so yeah, the Duna transfer windows are rare and the, and uh, you shouldn't miss those windows if you can help it. Alright, so here we go. This is the Duna encounter. We're going to warp at the start of the encounter. Our periaps looks great. Screen message. These are just breaking ground stuff. Alright, so now we are actually fly by Duna. This contract is properly complete. We have technically explored Duna. Obviously, I don't intend for this to be it. So, I'm going to go back to the Space Center and see if there's another mission I can pick up now that we've finished all of our missions. We have no active missions anymore. Clearly, I want to not just do a flyby of Duna, I'm going to properly explore it. So, go to Mission Control and explore Duna down here. We need to orbit it, gather scientific data from it, and return uh, from orbit. But I'm going to land on it. I'm not just going to orbit it. So... Uh, that's 
Return to Kerbin from orbit. Yeah. This is probably not my only Duna trip, needless to say. I might not exhaust Duna for science quite the way I did Min Minmus and Mun. I really hit Minmus and Mun quite a lot. Um, to grind up the science to unlock the tech to allow me to do bigger and better missions. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is let's go ahead and set up a periops burn here. We want to enter orbit. Something like that. Uh, if we tab over to the maneuver... We want, whoa, 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 whoa. That's not what I meant to do. I want to center the maneuver at the periaps. It's being fussy. There we go. And we're going to have a nice circular equatorial orbit around Duna. That, that's my aim here. All right, so let's warp to next maneuver. Here's my little ship. And now we're going to burn roughly retrograde and get a proper orbit around this thing. Once we have a proper orbit, part of this contract will be complete, and I'm going to do some science, because we will be in orbit around Duna, in the space around Duna. Uh, part of this uh, retrograde burn is going to use up the fuel left in this big tank, and then it's going to be the next stage. So what I'm going to do is burn earlier than I am supposed to just so that I can separate these two out okay so my burn time is in 18 seconds let's accelerate time a little bit burn time is in one second and burn and we'll I'm gonna burn just enough to say start burn dash and that means I'm just about on par with what I'm supposed to be doing this ship, now that it's less chunky and massive, is a little bit easier to control. And now that I'm near the end of the maneuver, I'm going to feather it as best as I can. Okay, so this is a nice circular, yeah, it's fairly circular orbit. Part of the parameter is now complete. I've entered Duna orbit. Good for me, right? Um, let's see. My engines have been charging up my electricity, so I don't actually need these solar power panels that I had up. Uh, what I'm going to do now that I'm in orbit of Duna is to get a little bit of science. I'm going to log some temperature stuff. And this is in space high over Duna, just for reference. Uh, I'm not going to be able to log seismic stuff because there is no, I'm not on the planet. I'm not going to be able to do atmospheric analysis, because I'm not actually in our atmosphere, but I am able to do goo. I'm going to save my science junior um, for when I land. All right, let's close up that surface bay. Now, Duna has a very, very, very thin atmosphere, um, but I don't want to be plowing into low atmosphere. I don't have heat shielding, so I need to do a mix of atmo braking and... Uh, of engine braking. So I'm going to dip into their atmosphere. Their atmosphere starts at about 50k. So at 45k uh, kilometers, that is, I will um, I will be able to start aero braking a little bit. Barely, but a little bit. Uh, this will also give me an opportunity to do um, atmospheric analysis because I'll be technically in Duna atmosphere for the first time. So this burn here is pretty simple. It is just a uh, more or less a retrograde burn um, to lower my orbit down a little bit. And I'm just accelerating time. And this puts me into the edge of space. I'm going to lower it just a little bit more than I had planned. I'm going to go down to like 40k. So there's 39k. And this puts me in a suborbital flight above Duna. I'm getting a lot of world first here, if you can tell. All right, so let's go ahead and warp. Oh, actually, before I do that, before I do the time warp, let's EVA, because that will be another uh, world first. There we go. Spacewalk in orbit of Duna. Um, 
Let's reboard. And start to warp until we are in high atmo. Now, I have quite a lot of fuel, so I could actually mostly engine break this, but I'd like to use all the crazy amounts of, um, of parachutes I have to do more than just engine break. So I'm going to move my parachute phase to lower and see if my parachuting can help. So right now, I'm actually in the Atmo of Duna. Milestone, there we go. I am in atmospheric flight above Duna. Duna doesn't really have that thick of an atmosphere, so I would not suggest trying to um, use a, a plane in it or something like that. That would, that would not be so great. Uh, so now that I'm in high... In upper atmosphere of Duna, I'm going to log um, some additional science. I logged atmospheric stuff, and I uh, ran goo and barometric stuff. Um, you're not really... I can definitely point... Let's see. I'm definitely going to point retrograde... But you're not going to see me engine braking all that much. I'm really, or aero braking rather, all that much. I'm in really, really, really high atmosphere here. So as you can see, I'm, I'm as I'm moving towards the periaps, uh, my apo is shrinking a little bit, and that's from aero braking. But as you can see, it's barely at all. Uh, what I'm going to do at the periaps here is add a maneuver to bring my APO down to aero braking as well. Uh, maybe even a little bit lower. So that I'm uh, I'm aero braking a little bit harder. So there's that maneuver. Now you gotta be careful because if you go, let's say you go down to almost sea level, um, you're gonna cause a lot of heat on your craft uh, really, really, really fast. Uh, that would not be so good. Uh, so what I could do here is these shoots here only go up to an altitude of about 5k. These drogue shoots. I'm going to, I should have done this back on my, uh, my craft here. I should have raised all of the drogue shoots up to 5k. So they're starting to do atmospheric drag, um, really as soon as they possibly can. Whereas the other shoots here at altitude 1000, and that's above land level, not sea level. It's kind of fine. Uh, but I might actually increase them to 2500. I know it's a little tedious. Now right now it's saying it's risky to do it, uh, to deploy it early. And the reason it's risky is because I'm in really high atmo. I'm in really low atmo, and potentially they'll burn up or snap or whatever. So it's advising me not to do it. And I won't. I won't deploy them early. Now for point of reference, it's been a long time since I've played Kerbal Space Program uh, and went all the way to Duna. So I haven't done this in easily a year or two. This is almost as new to me as it is to you. All right. Uh, the min pressures of all these 0.2. Okay, that might be okay. Let's accelerate some time here. And as you can see, my periaps here will just keep shrinking and shrinking and shrinking as I am aero braking. Uh, I don't really care for my first landing on Duna. I don't really care what biome I land on. They're all more or less the same to me. Uh, what I can check on is if I'm entered a new... Yeah, see, now I'm over... Duna's Midland Sea, that's going to be a unique exper ex ex uh, experiment uh, compared to the ones I've already ran. Because if I log, if I review this, oh, hold on, review this data, no, no, I guess it's the same. So I'm going to uh, reset this. Yeah, I already have Midland Sea data. So my periaps is shrinking, and it's just going to keep shrinking until basically I land. Uh, 
And what I've done just now is triggered all of my shoots to potentially deploy when it deems it not risky. But I'm still moving really, really, really fast in relation to um, surface. I'm moving, you know, almost a kilometer per second over the surface of Duna. As you can see, yeah, I'm spinning around it pretty fast. Um, what I'm going to do is use some of my engine to do engine braking because I don't want to do a whole lot of aero braking. So once I start seeing temperature buildup on aero braking, I'm going to engine brake a bit. And the reason I'm going to do that is mostly because uh, I don't want to burn up my craft. I don't have heat shielding. Now, if I had heat shielding on all the nose cones and everything, I could point um, straight at Duna and do proper aero braking. So what you're seeing here, the difference of parachute colors, uh, the red ones is it's way unsafe to uh, deploy, and the yellow is it's risky. Uh, the drogue shoots are going to say it's safer than anything else. Why are these... Oh, that's a... Uh, okay, I see. Yep. So now, as you can see, my periaps here has me actually basically landing. Uh, and that is the beauty of arrow breaking. That I... Obviously, on the MUN, I would have had to dramatically... Um, you know, engine broke... Or burned until I could land and as you can see here my surface speed is slowly decreasing at about I don't know uh, 0.1 meters per second or point, 0 0.05 meters per second the lower I get in the atmosphere the more dramatic the speed change is going to be and in fact I don't think small uh, objects like this to cause um, drag some small objects do, some don't. But, uh, yeah, I'm just going to have to keep an eye on the temperature. Because as soon as they start to heat up, I'm going to want to engine burn so that I don't have my engines cook, essentially. Unfortunately for you all, it looks like I'm going to be landing on somewhat of a nighttime or dusk scenario. So here we go. We're starting to build some heat up. So what I'm going to do is some good old-fashioned engine burning just so that I'm not going to cook myself, essentially. So the atmosphere is going to slow me down, but I don't want it to be the only thing slowing me down. So anytime I see sort of the heat build up, I can use engine braking. And hopefully, hopefully if I've done this right, uh, my parachutes will kick in at about uh, five kilometers up and really help to slow me down dramatically. Yeah, right now it is saying that it is, there we go, there goes the drogue chutes. And you'll see my speed dramatically decrease once these deploy. I do have some extra drogue chutes. Uh, that I can use. I have a few extra drogues and parachutes here that I could right click and deploy and repack. Uh, we'll see if it's needed. But as you can see, my speed here is really decreasing pretty quick. Um, my regular chutes are getting ready to deploy. And they should deploy. Yep, there we go. Now, here is the dramatic shift in speed. Uh, before I do proper landings, I can run some atmospheric analysis. Because I am a bit closer to the surface than I was before. I just need to find some unused science stuff. I could always bind this if I wanted to. And maybe in the future I will. And if I accelerate time, this has me, this might not be quite enough to stop me, because obviously I'm moving at 21-ish. So the, I can do a teeny bit of an engine burn right at the end here, because it doesn't look, actually you know what I could do? I could uh, deploy my top shoots and side shoots, see if I can't get a little extra drag. 
but no. It seems like I'm going to need to use a teeny bit of engine braking here. It's not quite enough parachutes to just parachute land. It's pretty close, though. And it's not a whole lot of fuel that I'm using here. Most of this landing was aero and and uh, and not engine. Bonk. And in a second, you'll see all of my beautiful shoots disappear. And world first milestone, I've landed on the surface of Duna. All right, all right. All right, so the first things first, let's get some crew reports and whatnot. So crew report of being on Duna. Uh, let's do an EVA report of being on Duna. I'm going to repack. Oh, you know what? I can't. I'm not an engineer. I can't repack these chutes. So um, what I'm going to need to do, because I'm an idiot, is I will have drogue chutes, but I'm going to need to engine land back on Kerbin. Um because I'm I'm a, a genius and forgot that, you know, that's not going to work for me. Okay, so let's get experiment control into my backpack. Yeah, I really should have left those shoots alone. Oh, well. Uh, before I do anything further, well... Hmm. Let's reboard and run all of the other science. So we have seismic data and... Atmospheric... Analysis, temperature, barometric, uh, goo, and all of my seismic stuff. I brought a whole lot of them because I just like symmetry. But um, there's probably pretty harsh diminishing returns, but I'm going to run them all. So anything that hasn't been run is going to get run so I just have to find the sciency stuff that has not been run. Which is mostly just seismic. And then, of course, the uh, science junior. This is going to yield a lot of science when we bring this home. This is a big leap forward. There's two atmospheric analysis. So it's kind of hard to tell what's going on here. But I've run everything at least once. So I think I'm okay. So I'm going to close the doors of the science junior. Close the doors of the service bay. And EVA, my guy. Or actually, let's reboard again. Hit one to deploy the solar power panels, two to deploy the lights, and three to deploy the landing ladder. And now, in my backpack here, I've got no inventory. So let's go get the experiment control. And we'll start to set up the experiment here. I don't think that we're really going to have... Um, uh, we're really going to have enough um, communication strength to bring it home, but I'm not sure about that. So we've walked on the surface of Duna. All right, let's do an EVA report. I'm at Duna Midlands. I'm going to plant a flag at Duna Midlands. Duna Midlands. Boom. And I'm going to deploy my experiment controls. Place the part. It's going to, there it goes. World first, planted a flag. All right, this, of course, is not going to have any power yet. Uh, before I do anything else, I'm going to see if there's any applicable missions for me to uh, undertake that can be tied into this current uh, Operation Duna mission. There might be some contracts that I can fulfill. Because I just plant a flag on Duna. Alright, I'm going to redo that. I'll pull the flag back up and put it back down. Uh, nothing else here includes Duna. Uh, what I can do is spend a teeny bit of my reputation declining some stuff. And seeing if any of these are going to include Duna. I don't want to decline too many because I care about reputation. No. Uh, orbital station? No, I'm not going to be able to do that. Okay. I guess I'll just do the plant a flag. 
So let's get back to my Duna mission and plant that flag. I didn't end up getting like um, get scientific data from surface or space of Duna or anything like that. Unfortunately, I was hoping for it, but it's a bit of RNG. Now it's possible, and this is might be something that I do. It's possible if I uh, accelerate time, uh, I would be able to acquire missions like that. Um, so maybe I'll do that. All right, let's replant this flag. Hey, look, that mission gave me like half a mil, and all I did was slap the flag down again. Okay, so uh, I'm going to see if I can't game the system a little bit, and instead of declining missions, just accelerate time until a lot of the ones that are offered expire, regenerating my uh, pool of contracts I can choose from. So I'm going to take a quick look at the contracts to see what their expirations are. Or no, you know what? I'm just going to uh, accelerate time uh, anyway. Let's go. A few days in the future. No, it all looks like the same old garbage. Uh, most of these expire in like one day. So let's accelerate time just a little bit more to make sure it's a different offering. That's good enough. New surface outpost on Duna. Uh, that's not going to work. Science from space around Duna. Cool. That's kind of what I wanted. And I'd like scientific data from the surface of Duna. Uh, so let me see if I can't game it just a little bit more. And what I'm looking to do here is to get some reputation and money for my big expensive Duna trip. That I didn't have a lot of missions to do. Alright, I'll get... This will be my last attempt. Science from Surface of Duna. Perfect, I got it. I got the ones I was looking for. Um, I don't have anything that says... I do have atmospheric surveys. Ideally, I would like to grab something like surface deployed goo or weather data from Duna. Let me just spend a little bit to cancel some of these. Because that would be huge. If I could get something like that. Because I don't, I don't want to do seismic. I want to do atmospheric. <sighs> Poor reputation. Taking such a hit. I did say that that was my last attempt at that. But... There is a potential for so much more science. Alright, doesn't look like I'm going to luck out here. I'll try one last time bringing it up to 220. Or 221. Nope. Whole lot of nope. Alright. Well, I, I tried. That's, the, that's all that really matters. So let's go back to Duna and uh, take off, basically. There's not much left to do. So let's go grab Jeb. Have him board and have him put himself back into Duna parking orbit. Making sure I've dotted my I's and crossed my T's. That I have soil and all that good stuff. I do need to deploy these experiment controls, even if I don't have a mission for it. I don't need to, but I should, because it will still yield science. I just don't have missions. Uh, so the easiest way to do that is to use my jetpack. Now, as you can see here, I don't fly like I did on Minmus or Mon or any of that. Uh, and I have to be con cognizant of my EVA propellant, because I don't have an infinite amount of it either. I should have enough to set all this up, though. I'm not, I'm, I'm being economical about my EVA. Now, if you were really worried about that, about how much EVA fuel you'll have, you should probably um, have proper ladders everywhere so that you can climb back to your ship providing you ran out of fuel. 
I didn't do that. But I have enough fuel. As soon as I reboard, I think it replenishes my fuel. I can double check for that. So there's all this sciency data stuff. Now I just need to set up the power network. My poor, uh, okay, surface sample. My poor Kerbal here is getting, I'm not, I'm going for pretty hard landings. And just sort of deploying these willy-nilly. I hope that, <laughs> I hope they get powered. I haven't really analyzed the sun and shadows or anything here. I'm just this is where I landed and I'm just kinda of slapping everything down. Alright, so I've gone through about 1.5 or 1.75 out of my fuel here, my EVA fuel. And I'm I'm obviously setting up more panels than I need. Um Call it being cautious, I guess. I have one more panel than I need. So if I had a panel that broke or something like that, I would not have a a, a broken uh, broken base. A little science base. Alright, so it's unpowered still. Last solar power panel. Bonk. I hope I don't destroy this. I actually don't know what the collision tolerance for these are. I haven't used them enough. Alright, so that's a lot of solar power panels. Nothing is uh, powered up right now. So what I'm going to try to do... Let's reboard this dear ship of ours. This should be a nice, easy way to board. So... This little ladder I have here just increases my ability to grab and reboard. Uh, it looks like I grabbed two surface samples, so it's dumping one of them because I don't have space for it. If I re EVA, do I get more fuel? Yeah, I like generate more EVA fuel. Uh, what just exploded? Hmm. I'm not entirely sure what exploded. The, uh, Duna Midlands, the flag exploded? Wait, for real? The flag just exploded? Okay, hold on. Coming back out, Jeb. Apparently my flag exploded. I guess we didn't test it to, uh, to the specifications required to have an unexplosive flag. I didn't realize that that was a thing. It might have just had like collision problems, but I do find that kind of funny. Let's plant yet another flag. Hopefully one that isn't explosive. <laughs> ah, that's so funny. Alright. Duna Midlands. Please don't explode. Fortunately for me, Jeb has a seemingly infinite supply of uh, exploding flags. Hope maybe this one won't explode. Let's grab, reboard, turn off. Oh no, I want my solar power panels up, but turn off. Or actually, no, 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 retract them. Retract everything. Except for my landing gear. Okay. Now. If I accelerate time until I'm in the sun, there we go. Now I can take a look. I have five available power, four needed. If I check my um, weather analyzer, I'm generating weather science. If I check my goo monitor, I'm generating goo science. If I check my... Uh, is that just the, those two? Yeah, yeah, just those two. Okay, so they're working. They're functioning. Um, now, 
I am going... So I only have drogue shoots left because I'm an idiot and didn't do that correctly. Uh, let's go ahead. I have plenty of fuel. I'm going to put myself into parking orbit. So this is just like orbiting um, Kerbin, but my Apple apps needs to be lower. And I can stage the empty tanks off. Bye bye. And I'm just putting myself into rough equatorial orbit of Duna. Not being economical about my fuel at all. Alright, so Apple Apps is enough for an orbit here. I'm probably going to want my orbital period a little bit higher, but for right now, I'll just get a stable orbit. Looks like I'm going to have to stage one more time. Now, the other issue is will I have enough kilonewtons in my. Will I have enough, I guess, thrust in my landing stage to actually engine land. Uh, that is the 24000 or the $64,000 question. If I don't, uh, what I could do is retrieve the science and land this uh, craft some other way or send an engineer up um, to repack those chutes. Um, that would actually be probably easier. Send an in engineer up into Kerbin orbit while this thing is orbiting to repack the chutes and um, get the craft ready to land again. Part of me kind of likes these sort of like mistakes because it adds character. If all these missions were perfect, it they'd be boring. All right, so here's my burn time. I'm going to be phasing. Uh, I'm going to be staging one of my engines off. So these are out of fuel. Goodbye. Goodbye now. All right, that weird camera shift means that. Oh, I uh, I do need. I'm not perfectly in orbit yet. There we go. I'll just do this quick maneuver. All right, Perry apps, Apple apps, good. All right, so now I am in Duna orbit once again with all of my beautiful science and 5K Delta V left on my little rocket. Uh, the thing is, I am massively over my time, so the return trip will be stage three. If you have any tips, tricks, feedback for me, just let me know. I wanted to thank um, Shadow X for pointing out that this is not my first time leaving Kerbin Sphere of Influence. I did do that solar observation mission. And Ilya for the show extended burn indicator. If you have anything else for me, tip-wise, drop me a line. And I do hope that you tune in next time. Thank you all very much for watching. I'll catch you all later. Adios.